Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Lin. I'm a third year PhD student from the University of Utah. Today, I'm gonna talk about my paper, Arterial Flow, a GPU oscillation flow for parallel arterial simulation. Here's the introduction for arterial simulation. So what is arterial simulation and why we need arterial simulation? Well, the reason is that arterial simulation is a very critical technique for checking the correctness of Howard designs. It is used in variety of IC design steps, such as verification, validation, and design space exploration. And typically what RTO simulation does is to leverage large numbers of input sequences, say base stimulus or multiple stimulus to check the correctness of a design. So what is the motivation of this paper? Well, as you can see, the design complexity of modern design is extremely high. So that's actually over than 70% of IC design turnaround time are spent on verification. Right now, traditional sequential simulation solutions are not enough for this kind of large designs. We need a parallel RTO simulation solution to speed up verification. And thus, parallel RTO simulation is more and more important in these days. So here, let me talk about how we parallelize the RTO simulation. Well, there are two levels of parallelism. First, structural level parallelism, which most of a simulator will do, is to partition the design and perform simulation in parallel. So take this graph as an example. Take this circuit as an example. And what we do is to partition this circuit to, say, five blocks, and here, the partition A, partition B can be simulated in parallel. And that's what we call structural level of parallelism. Another level of parallelism which all simulators don't do is stimulus level parallelism. In the design, we have multiple stimulus to perform simulation. Those stimulus can run in parallel since there is no dependency between stimulus. Well, most of several arts don't explore this level of parallelism because this is typically done by running multiple instances of single stimulus simulation. We can just spawn multiple processes and run multiple stimulus in parallel. This organization is simple, yet takes no advantage of the large available data parallelism. Specifically, GPU computing provides this potential for exploiting this available data parallelism. Arterial simulation typically transpiles the given Verilog to C++. Here gives an example. We declare a design, DUT, and a simulator, SIM, to simulate the waveforms cycle by cycle. A cycle iteration, we first set the inputs of DUT using the given stimulus file. Due to I.O. and iteration with external test branch drivers, this step sets inputs, runs on CPU, and becomes expensive when we run multiple stimulus. We then evaluate the design based on the inputs at rising and falling clocks zero and one. And the entire iteration continues until the simulator emits a stop signal or computes, uh, completes all simulation cycles. There are three challenges when we want to use GPU to run RTO simulation with batch stimulus. First, lack of an open infrastructure to break language barrier. Of course, we don't want to rewrite every RTO simulation code to CUDA. There are automatic transpilation tools from RTO to C++. However, they just cannot be used out of the box for GPUs because they don't speak the same language. Second, lack of a GPU-aware RTO partitioning algorithm. Well, exi existing RTO simulators partition a RTO graph for CPUs. And as you can imagine, this CPU-specific partitioning cannot provide good performance for GPUs because the architecture of CPU and GPU are totally different. Third, lack of an efficient CPU-GPU task scheduler. A cycle, GPU needs to wait until CPU read or set input for all stimulus. So here is some experimental results. The S axis is the number of stimulus and the y-axis is the GPU utilization rate. 
and as you can see, when the st uh, number of st stimulus is 1024, the GPU utilization rate is 75%. However, when we increase the number of stimulus to 16K, the GPU utilization rate is dropped to 32%. So we need an efficient CPU GPU task scheduler to schedule those tasks so that we can overlap CPU and GPU tasks. At a high level, RTO flow automatically transpiles RTO sources to CPU source and CUDA code to accelerate multi stimulus simulation on the GPU. RTO flow consists of two parts kernel core transpilation and test graph code transpilation. In kernel core transpilation, we annotate an RTO ST that is generated by variables parser and transpile the annotated RTO ST into C++ and CUDA using GPU memory allocation and mapping algorithms. In test graph code transpilation, we partition the uh, RTO graph into a GPU test graph using a sampling based algorithm. We execute the GPU test graph using modern CUDA graph, which is particularly useful for our workload. To further improve the performance, we introduce a pipeline-based scheduling algorithm to further explore more parallelism across simulation iterations. In kernel code transpilation, we have three stages. The first one is RTO ST annotation. And the second is incremental GPU memory allocation. And the final one is GPU memory index mapping. We build our transpilation techniques atop variators RTOSD parser to reuse its IO infrastructure. So before I dive in the implementation details, let me explain what RTOSD first. So here, this is an example of an RTOSD. We have a module called M1. In this module, we have sales to instantiations module, C1, C2. And in this module, we have a C function. Inside this C function, we have seven nodes to represent this one statement, assign in equals to 10 plus sum. So in this uh, red block, we have a sign node, we have variable reference node to re uh, refer to in and sum variable. We also have a A node to represent a A operator. And finally, we have a constant node. So these seven nodes represent this statement assigned in equals to 10 plus sum. Due to limited time of this presentation, I will skip the RTOST annotation parts and directly talk about incremental GPU memory allocation and GPU memory index mapping. So first, incremental GPU memory allocation. In our design, each GPU thread simulates one stimulus, and of course, we need to allocate memories for all variables in the design. However, the issue is that the width of each variable is largely different. An inefficient stretch can result in uncoalesced memory access. Figure on the bottom shows an inefficient stretch that um, uses one fixed width array of 8 bits array to store all variables. And here in is a 6 bits variable and sum is a 14 bits variable stored into two memory locations, sum1 and sum2. So to load all bits in sum, each GPU thread needs to access dreaded memory twice. And this data organization results in uncoalesced memory access that largely degrades the simulation performance. To address this issue, we allocate four GPU arrays, 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit arrays to store our variables. And the variable is stored into the smallest of the four types that fits the width of the variable. So as shown in the figure on the bottom here, because the width of sum is between 9 and 16 bits, we use 16 bits array to store c one sum and c 2 sum. Similarly, we use 8 bits array to store c one in and c 2 in To handle unstimulus, we duplicate one variable per cell n times in the corresponding array. So here we have offset to indicate GPU's memory allocation, and that's what we call incremental GPU memory allocation. So after the incremental GPU memory allocation, we traverse an RTOST 
and use computed GPU memory offset to emit GPU efficient CUDA code. The upper graph is very transpiled code from Verilog to C++, and the lower graph is corresponding code that RTO flow transpiles Verilog to CUDA. So for example, in variator, C1.in is assigned to 10 plus C1 the sum. In RTO flow, the code becomes VR8 because the variable is stored into VR8. And the offset of C1.in is 1, and thus its index is mapped to n multiplied by 1 plus the thread ID, TID, that handles the TID stimulus. So the next part, test graph code transpilation. In this part, we have three stages. The first one is GPU array partitioning, the second one is CUDA graph, and the final one is pipeline scheduling. So first, GPU array partitioning. Right now, we have an AST, but the AST is too fine-grained. We need to partition it to a coarser graph, which we also called partition test graph. So the framework will be like this. Uh, start from a fine-grained graph, and say one AST node per task. We try to merge two dependent tasks based on weight sum of each task. So given two merged tasks, we try to compute the weight sum of all arterial nodes in the task and use it to produce a new task. In the weight sum function, Wt is the weight of an arterial node t, and nt is the number of arterial node t in the given task. And we will repeat until we fall into a certain threshold to finish the partitioning algorithm. In variator, they use hard-coded weight in terms of CPU instructions. So for example, uh, they think the uh, variable node, the weight of variable node is three. And for example, the weight of eight node is two and so on and so forth. So in variator, they use hard-coded weight in terms of CPU instructions. And as you can imagine, this CPU specific partitioning can now provide good performance for GPUs because the architecture of CPU and GPU are totally different. In this paper, we propose GPU aware partitioning algorithm. Figure shows the overview of our algorithm to find a GPU efficient test graph. Rather than hard coding weight, we iteratively explore a new weight vector for partitioning use a Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling algorithm. Our algorithm consists of two components, estimator and optimizer. The estimator estimates the cost of a proposed GPU test graph by compiling its transpile code and running it on a GPU. We evaluate the graph with a small number of randomly selected stimulus and cycles, and estimated cost is returned to optimizer. This strategy allows us to discover parameters from a small set of data that is represented for um, the entire program. Problem. And the miser will iteratively propose a new graph by randomly and incrementally altering the weight function, weight sum, from the previous iteration. And the iteration continues until we cannot find a better graph for a maximum number of iterations. Next, CUDA graph. After obtaining a partition GPU test graph, we need to offload it to a GPU. Know that RTO simulation typically will run thousands or even millions of cycles to do verification. The traditional stream-based approach will incur significant runtime overhead because each kernel is called by CPU and this results in large amounts of CUDA core overhead. What's worse is that these overheads accumulate across cycles. On the other hand, CUDA graph can eliminate this overhead by defining the graph once and running it in the graph repeatedly. So in our design, we leverage CUDA graph to offload our workload to GPU. The last one, pipeline scheduling. So why we need pipeline scheduling? As I mentioned before, Multi-stimulus arterial simulation incurs significant overhead in setting the input, which in turn causes the GPU to wait. To overcome this problem, we further partition bad stimulus into groups 
and use a pipeline scheduling algorithm to overlap CPU and GPU tasks within a cycle. So here's the overview of our proposed pipeline scheduling. We further process batch stimulus into groups GI. In the pipeline, each stage will simulate one cycle, CI. As shown in the figure on the top here, for each cycle, we will perform four CPU or GPU tasks. Set input, evaluate design, set clock, and evaluate design again. So here, for example, at stage one, we pass G1 into our pipeline and simulate it at the first cycle, C1. At stage two, we pass G2 in our pipeline. We then simulate G1 as C2 and G1 as C1 in parallel. Since our pipeline scheduling does not control dependency between groups, tasks in G1 and tasks in G2 can be overlapped. For instance, we can execute set input in G1 and evaluate design in G2 simultaneously. Specifically, a GPU only needs to wait for CPU class to finish set input for a group. Hence, uh, we overlap computation between CPU and GPU tasks. And also, since we can offload multiple simulation evaluation design to a GPU at a time, overlaps of evaluation design across different groups can further, lap, uh, further increase the GPU utilization rate. Here is the overview again for Agile Flow. So Agile Flow consists of two parts, kernel code transpilation and test graph code transpilation. In kernel code transpilation, we annotate an Agile ST that is generated by variators parser and transpile the annotate Agile ST into C++ and CUDA using GPU memory allocation and mapping algorithms. In test graph code transpilation, we partition the Agile graph into a GPU test graph using a sampling based algorithm. We execute the GPU test graph using modern CUDA graph to avoid runtime overhead as simulation cycles. To, uh, to further improve the performance, we introduce a pipeline based scheduling to further explore more pluralism in the cycle. Here is the hardware platform for our experimental results. For RTO flow, we use one RTS A6000 GPU and eight CPU cores. For both baselines, variator and descent, we use AT CPU thread server, and we all turn on the highest level of optimizations. To evaluate the uh, performance, we use three designs, RIS5 Mini, Spinal, and NVDOA. The table here shows the design statistics and the complexity of each transpiled code using variator and audio flow. I will see here means lines of code. Taking NVDOA as an example, RTL flow transpiles 511k lines of RTL to 560k lines of CUDA and C++ simulation code in about 30 seconds. For large design like NVDOA, it is impractical for developers to rewrite all RTL code to CUDA manually. Without RTL flow, it becomes very difficult for simulation engineers to harness the power of GPU computing using minimal programming effort. The table here compares the simulation time between variator with 80 CPU threads and RTL flow with one A6000 GPU on Spinal and a VDOA for completing 256, 1024, 4K, 65K stimulus at 10K, 100K, and 500K clock cycles. Until flow outperforms variator using 80 CPU threads in almost all scenarios. With 65K stimulus, RTL flow is 46.7 times faster on Spinal at 500K cycles and is 40 points seven times faster on the video A at 10K cycles. We can clearly see RTL flow's structure and stimu uh, stimulus level parallelism bring significant performance benefits to simulate multi-stimulus in parallel. The left figure here shows the runtime growth over increasing numbers of stimulus for variator, isent, and arterial flow. When the number of stimulus is less than 1024, all simulators are able to finish simulation 
in five seconds. The advantage of GPU is not clear compared to others with 80 CPU threads. When the number of stimulus is larger than 1024, where data parison becomes large, RTO flows start to scale better than variator and instant. Right figure shows runtime comparison across different hardware performs for NVDA with 16K stimulus at 10 cycle, 10K cycles. Compared to single threaded variator, RTO flow achieves over than 500 times speed up using one a GPU. We have introduced RTO flow, a GPU acceleration flow for parallel RTO simulation. We leverage both stimulus and structural level parallelism to speed up RTO simulation using one GPU. There are two feature works we can do. The first one is to improve test graph partitioning part. Right now, we just take the summation of all the cost of nodes in the task. What we can do is to try another cost function to precisely predict the runtime cost of the task. And maybe we can replace MCMC sampling with other machine learning methods like reinforcement learning. The second part is to erase RTO flow on a much larger range of designs and stimulus. All right, so that's all I have today. Thanks for listening.